Hey guys, David here with Northwest Outdoor Adventures, and today I'm going to be going over one of Nike's latest trail running shoes, the Wild Horse 6. Whew, God, my hair is really long because of quarantine stuff going on, so uh, we'll hide it up and uh, do it that way. All right, so uh, just kind of really quick jumping into the shoe, if you don't want to sit through the whole review. Uh, as many of you probably know, I like to run in ultra shoes. That's what most of my content is, is reviewing and running in those shoes. Um, I'd say, you know, 90 plus percent of the time, whether it's on the roads, I'm using the Torin Plush lately. On the trails, I'm typically using whatever iteration of the Temps is out, or maybe the Lone Peaks. Um, so there's a couple things that drew me to this shoe, and uh, I'll go over those later in the video. But yeah, just kind of a real quick thing. I really like them. I think I'm going to run in these quite a bit. Um, I have been running in them quite a bit, and I'm going to continue to. I don't think they're quite enough to pull me away from Ultra uh, completely, but they definitely have their uses for me at least. So um, yeah, overall, I would recommend them. If you are interested in them, definitely try them out. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the quick review. And now we'll jump into you know what I do like about it and maybe what I don't like so much about them. All right, so jumping into what I like about the shoe. Um, you know, the first thing obviously that draws a lot of people's eyes to this shoe is the look of it. So it's got a, lot, a couple of unique kind of uh, features on it. Uh, obviously the colorways that they came out with are pretty unique. Um, and you probably have seen some of that if you remember the Wild Horse 5. At least that's the first one that I remember having kind of a unique colorway, that like bright pink and I think blue or something like that. I remember seeing that at Tiger Claw. I think David Laney actually was wearing them. And I was like, well, those look kind of cool. And I almost bought them, but I didn't. But anyways, so yeah, the colorway and I guess just the look of the shoe, it's kind of unique. I mean, you get a lot of weird looking shoes in the trail running world but um you know especially like hoka and stuff a lot of weird colorways but i don't know i usually find them to be pretty ugly and although i've seen a lot of people online you know calling this shoe ugly as well and at first i thought kind of the same thing um but it kind of drew or you know grew on me and uh i decided you know i'll go ahead and buy them uh, largely based off of the looks i thought you know after looking at them for a little bit i was like you know i actually kind of like these so i bought a pair and you know obviously nike and stuff they put out a lot of good stuff in general, and so I figured I'd check them out. So that was kind of the first thing is the colorway. You know, it looked kind of cool. It had a couple of unique features. Uh, the main one being in the heel, uh, kind of the top of the ankle, I guess I should say. Um, it has like a sock type liner uh, that lines your ankle now, which um, you may or may not be able to see there. And uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how that would feel, but I thought it was kind of a cool concept. The tongue itself is also uh, very thin, uh, super thin, super lightweight, has a little bit of a cushion on it from the laces. Um, and then, yeah, it just had this very aggressive tread on the bottom, as you can probably see here. And so, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just the style of the shoe seemed pretty unique. It looked pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of why I bought it. Um, first impression when I got it was very narrow. So, Again, you know, I've said many times I typically run in ultra shoes and with that, you know, they at least ultra likes to tote that they have their uh, whatever they call it, their foot shaped shoes. And so they have a bit of a wider toe box area or at least uh, the forefoot um, is a bit wider. And so uh, my foot has definitely become accustomed to that. And so slipping into the Nike, I definitely noticed a bit of a difference. Um, so I'm not sure how many people watching this would be going from ultras to these shoes, but that's something to be aware of. You know, they're a bit more of a narrow shoe and definitely if you have like bunions or something, or if you have wider feet, that may be an issue. Um, and I did find out later, you know, I got some blisters because of that, which I'll talk about more in the dislike section, but, um, yeah, so the fit was pretty good. I mean, it was snug and tight and I was a little worried about the, the sock type liner that they have up here. Um, not really holding, you know, maybe it would cause some slippage and stuff, uh, but that wasn't the case, luckily. So, yeah, I was overall really excited to run on these once I tried them on because the fit was pretty good, aside from it being a little bit tight. Um, on their website, they list them at least, you know, I didn't actually weigh these, but they're about an ounce heavier than the previous iteration, than the uh, Wild Horse 5s. However, I didn't really notice that um, while I was running. And again, I, you know, I run in somewhat heavier shoes sometimes, so maybe I'm just accustomed to it, but they actually felt really lightweight. And maybe that's just the design and how the weight is distributed amongst the shoe. I have no idea, but it actually felt really good. So um, yeah, the fit and feel was pretty good. The weight, I didn't notice it being heavier. 
Um, you know, these have a built-in rock plate, much like uh, the fives did as well, the previous iteration. Um, I don't really care about rock plates. I'm not a huge fan of them, but um, as long as they're not detracting, you know, if they're not super stiff, um, it doesn't really matter to me. And I didn't notice, you know, if somebody didn't tell me that there was a rock plate in these, I probably wouldn't notice. So that's nice. Um, so I probably should have mentioned this already, but I've put close to probably just under 150 miles on these shoes so far. So another huge like that I have for these shoes, and again, with the ultra background, a lot of people who wear ultra shoes will probably get this. Um, the durability that I'm seeing so far is really, really good. Um, it's probably a little bit hard to tell, but um, there really isn't any signs of major wear or anything like that on the shoe that I can find. Um, and yeah, like I said, in most ultra shoes at 150 miles, you know, you're seeing some pretty significant signs of wear. So that's pretty great to me, pretty amazing to me, um, that really showing zero signs of wear. It doesn't look like I've even really ran more than 20 miles in these, to be honest. And so I'm pretty impressed with that. And again, I do a lot of running um, in pretty, I don't know, I guess technical terrain. So I live in the Pacific Northwest. So there's a lot of rocks and roots and mud and and things like that that I run on the trails. And with the quarantine, especially the last probably 30 or so miles uh, that I put on these, um, we're on either a bike path that led to a trail or so there's some road running in there too that you would think would have a pretty big impact on like the lugs and stuff on the bottom of the shoes. But, you know, I really didn't see any of that wear yet. So again, I'm impressed with the durability. The build quality seems really good. All right, so for the dislikes, um, of course, you know, not every shoe has has all good things about it. So anyways, kind of the big things that I dislike about it, again, it's a bit narrow, which I mentioned before. And so for your particular foot, it may be a little bit too narrow. Um, and probably the main reason that I wouldn't use these as my main shoe is because any longer runs I did, really about anything over eight miles, I found that I kept getting a blister on my pinky toe because it was rubbing kind of up uh, up on the side of the shoe. So, and that's something I never experienced with ultras. And again, it might just be because my foot's more accustomed to that layout in those shoes, but you know, that was an issue for me. Um, and I know it's primarily due to the shoe because it's, like I said, it doesn't happen in any other shoes I own. Um, and so, yeah, that's a little bit of a bummer there. Um, my foot does get a little hot in these as well. Um, it has pretty good ventilation overall, but, um, and then, you know, the forefoot is all mesh and everything. Um, but they do have this liner that surrounds kind of the toe cap. I assume to keep some moisture out as you're, you know, running through and things like that. But I found it to be a little bit limiting and I probably prefer to it. I don't know. To me, my foot seemed to sweat a little bit more than it does in say like the temps or something like that and some other shoes that I have. Um, it's certainly not the worst for ventilation or drainage. Um, but again, living in the Pacific Northwest, I definitely run through a lot of puddles and stuff like that. And so I found that um, really there isn't, I don't know, they don't dry or drain that great, um, at least compared to a lot of the ultras that I run in. So that was another thing that I wasn't too stoked on with these shoes. Um, another thing, not for me, but again, I not like my girlfriend and stuff, like a lot of people that I do know do not like this colorway. Um, they said it's very ugly. It looks like a Lego, um, things like that. So uh, you might get teased if that's something that might bother you. Uh, personally, I don't care. So it really wasn't an issue for me, and like I said, I like the colorway, but it seems to be um, a bit polarizing. Some people seem to really like it, some people seem to hate it, so I don't know which side you are on, but um, but yeah, so, and they really don't have that great of options, uh, at least when I last looked. I think there was only like two or maybe three colorways um, for this shoe, and yeah, overall, not a lot of options there, so if you kind of don't like the colorways they have, that's that's what it is, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's pretty much it overall. Uh, the price point, that's another thing that's a little bit pricey. Uh, I bought it for $130 from REI. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit on the pricier side for shoes. But again, the durability so far kind of makes up for that, um, at least in my mind. So um, I'm, I'm liking the durability. So I guess to summarize, you know, uh, the fit and feel has to work for you. So with pretty much any shoe, you know, you have to try it on first. And uh, even then, you know, it might take some of those longer runs before you start finding finding issues with the shoe. Like like for me, you know, going over eight miles seems to cause some blistering. And, and that wasn't a one-time thing. That was like a four-time thing. So yeah, um, I've given up on using these shoes for longer runs. But um, I do like it for shorter, more aggressive trails. 
Um, the traction, I didn't really mention that before, but the traction is really good on these shoes. Um, again, I'm in a lot of slippery type conditions and these held up just as well, if not better than a lot of the ultra shoes that I use. So um, that's pretty much it. I've probably rambled on long enough. Um, there's a lot of things about the shoe that I, you know, probably overlooked or didn't mention, but overall, I hope this helped you decide something or, or gave you some perspective. If you have some different information, or if you've used these shoes and have some other thoughts to add, please feel free to mention it in the comments below. Other than that, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's doing okay during this quarantine time and it ends soon. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later.